Today we're talking about Canadian Goldenrod. Is it a garden thug or garden hero on the Northeastern Native Plant Digest? Hey everyone, this is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Uh, so today I want to talk about Canadian goldenrod, Solidago canadensis. This is a plant that people either uh, love or they hate. Uh, generally, it seems like people fall in the, one of those two camps. And if you're one of those people that ha uh, hate this plant, I'm, I hope that by the time I end this video and this little talk, you'll change your mind and maybe reass reassess your views of this plant and uh, hopefully maybe even decide to incorporate it into your garden. So a couple of the reasons why I think people hate this plant or, you know, don't like this plant or, hes or are hesitant even maybe to put this in your garden is because it has a couple bad reputations. Uh, the first being that uh, this is a very aggressive spreader. It can spread through rhizome, it self-seeds. Actually, these two clumps that I have here, uh, this is the third year that they're here, that they've been here uh, in this part of my yard, and I didn't actually even plant them. They just actually showed up <laughs> and I, I recognized them and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna let these grow up uh, this year. They look fantastic. I have to say they look fantastic, uh, but these can spread again through rhizome, uh, through self seeding. And typically uh, you're, they, you know, they do especially well in disturbed sites. Uh, you're going to see these bloom in this type of the year, late summer, uh, in the early fall, end of August into September, uh, maybe even going into the early part of October. And uh, typically you're going to see these growing all, everywhere this time of year by the side of the roads, in ditches, uh, disturbed areas. Like I said, these plants come in, they, they colonize real quickly, and a lot of times they can uh, out-compete uh, other plants that might not be as aggressive or other plants that maybe don't spread as rapidly as these do. So that's one of the reasons people are kind of hesitant about planting these in their gardens. Uh, another one is that they're uh, wrongly associated with uh, with fall allergies. They happen to bloom about the same time as ragweed, which is another native plant. Uh, but but goldenrod, because they're so much more visible, uh, they have a lot you know a lot more visible bloom. Typically, people uh, associate them as being the plant that's causing the issues when really it's the ragweed. And the, the main difference between these two plants is that uh, ragweed is a wind pollinated plant, whereas goldenrod is an insect pollinated plant. So that's one of your key differences there. So this plant is, does not cause uh, fall allergies. So, you know, you know, so that's, a, that's one of the reasons. So we can dispel that right away and, uh, you know, cross that off your list if that's one of the reasons why you don't want to plant this plant. So why do we, why would we want to uh, plant this plant? Well, you know, what makes this plant such a wonderful plant for a pollinator garden? What makes it such a wonderful plant, uh, you know, if, if you're looking to add, uh, you, know, you know, a native plant to your garden? Uh, well, there are a lot of different reasons. <clears throat> you know, strictly from an aesthetic, uh, an aesthetic perspective, you know, this is a, a, a very beautiful plant. I mean, look at the uh, look at the flower heads on that. I mean, this thing is loaded with flowers. Very beautiful. Look at there, there's a ladybug there. <clears throat> Another wonderful thing that's uh, that I like about goldenrod is that they actually have a nice fragrance to them. And that's one of the things uh, I don't really typically hear people talk about that too much with goldenrod, but they do have a, a very light. Uh, airy fragrance to them, especially when you plant them in mass. <coughs> now this is a tall plant, as you can see. Uh, this particular clump here is about five, maybe five and a half feet tall. But these things are absolutely loaded with pollinators. There's a honeybee on there. All types of honeybees, bumblebees, pollinating wasps. Uh, this thing is always loaded with pollinators. And it, this is a, a very important plant for pollinators in the late summer season, you know, when winter's getting ready to come on, uh, a lot of plants are finishing up their bloom time. These, along with uh, New England asters and uh, other late blooming plants, very important uh, nectar sources for plant for insects this type of year. So this is a, another, you know, 
really important reason why we should plant this plant. <clears throat> another, uh, another important uh, reason to plant this plant, and I think it's one of the most amazing features of this plant, is just the sheer number of pollinators that it supports. As far as uh, butterfly and moth caterpillars, this supports about 122 different species of butterfly and moth caterpillars, which puts it at the very top of, uh, of uh, perennials that support uh, butterflies and moths, 122 different species. That's amazing. So it's a very, so it's an extremely important plant from that aspect. Uh, looks great paired with, uh, looks wonderful with New England asters. Any kind of purple plants, uh, ironweed, stuff like that, it looks great with that. It's not picky about a uh, soil. This here is grown in pretty much straight clay, so it does great with clay. Uh, it does good with average garden soil. If you want to, if you want to, you know, keep it a little bit shorter, I would recommend cutting it back by about two thirds, uh, probably in maybe early June or so. And then you can kind of control the height. Uh, I, I actually just kind of like the way it looks, the way it is. Uh, <clears throat> I do have a very fibrous root system, so if you want to keep these under control, I would try, uh, I would highly recommend, you know, if you don't want them overrunning your garden, in other words, try to, try to find them when they're small and, uh, you know, dig them up, separate them, pull out unwanted, uh, unwanted, uh, suckers or babies, whatever. But there again, you know, this plant is, is very important for late season pollinators. There are other species of goldenrod that you could also incorporate into your garden and I'm going to be doing some videos on those uh, coming up here. I have some showy goldenrod, some uh, uh, solid, uh, some also some uh, zigzag goldenrod. I had a problem spot in one of my shady areas. And zigzag goldenrod is a species that actually does pretty good in shade. Look at those bumblebees. This thing's always loaded with bees. So there you go. This is a quick video. Uh, you know, there again, you know. Great for pollinators, 122 different species of uh, butterfly and moth caterpillars, wonderful late season nectar source for bees, uh, <clears throat> easy to grow, easy to maintain, uh, you know, maybe not as easy to control, uh, you know, that depends on what your goals are, but uh, definitely worthy of consideration for the garden, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> there again, it doesn't cause uh, late season allergies like a lot of people think. So there you go. So my original question was, was this a, is this a garden thug or a garden hero? And in my estimation, you know, this is a garden hero. And I would highly recommend, you know, you know, at least considering putting some goldenrod uh, in your garden. If not Canadian goldenrod, you know, go online. There's a lot of different species that, that uh, uh, you might be able to find for your area. But, uh, you know, there you go, you know, give it a, give it a try, give it a, give it a consideration and, uh, and, uh, see what you think. <clears throat> I guarantee that if you're, you're looking to help pollinators, you're not going to regret planting this plant. And that's the whole purpose of my garden is to plant for pollinators, plant for nature. Uh, you know, and that's the most important thing we can do right now with our gardens, as far as I'm concerned. So there you go. Canadian goldenrod. What's the verdict? Garden Hero. Hope you guys have a great day. This is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest. Uh, give this a thumbs up. Leave your sub, uh, comments below. Subscribe to our channel. Share this video. I appreciate everybody. Hope you have a great day. Bye.